Should we neglect the cause? Should we forget the loss and fail to point the sinners to the cross? Then would our labor be in vain if we deny Jesus' name to the world dying in their shame? Should we neglect the cause? Should we neglect the cause? Should we forget the loss and fail to point the sinner to the cross? Then would our labor be in vain if we deny Jesus' name to the world dying in their shame? Should we neglect chapter 5. Have we neglected the cause? Think seriously about that and think of all of those folks in Ukraine. I don't know. I haven't heard no statistic, but there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and probably thousands that have went out into eternity here in a week. And I wonder, have we Christians neglected the cause? Uh, I'm just thinking, sitting there, I don't remember that we have ever had a missionary in here from Ukraine. And I, I may be wrong, but I do not remember. Uh, 
My, have we neglected the cause. The book of 2 Corinthians, if you will, as we come to this chapter and we find uh, verse 1 says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Are you saved? Amen. If you're saved, that's a pretty good verse. <laughs> that's a good verse anyway. I don't mean that. But if you're saved, think about that again. For we know, it's good to know some things, that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, that's the old bodies that we have. That's, that's the one I see as I look out at you. I don't see the real you. I see the old house. Scripture says the old nature, the old man. But we know we know that we have a building of God and house not made with hands. When we're done with this old body and the Lord calls us home, we know that we have a new house. We have a new home. We have a new body. You say, Preacher, what's it really going to look like? I don't know. No one else does. You have someone trying to tell you what it looks like? Uh, their, their guess is no better than yours or mine. I know one thing. My house is going to look better than this one does. I mean, I, no matter what it be, it look, look better than this one, okay? But it's going to be with the Lord. And then look what he says, eternal in the heavens. Shout of God, the future is mighty bright. I know it's a dark day. I know that everything's happening is dark, humanly speaking. But as a believer, uh, the future is as bright as the promises of God. It's bright. Now, we see that, and then I want us to skip down to about verse number 17. Now he's talking to believers, and he says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if he be saved, if you will, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. In Christ, there is a change. A lot of things will not change, folks. Uh, relatives can't change a person. Uh, religion won't change people. You say, preacher, they come to church, they'll change. No, if they come to Christ, they'll change. Uh, wealth can't change people. For good, it may for the worst. But wealth doesn't do them. Water, the water in the baptismal tanks cannot change people. Works cannot change people. No matter how good of works they do, there's only one that can change. The old poem says, "'Twas battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarce worth his while.'" 
to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. He said, what? What am I bid, good folk, he cried. Who start the bidding for me? A dollar? A dollar two. Only two? Two dollars. And who'll make it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three. But no, from the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from that old violin and tightening up the strings, he played a melody pure and sweet, as sweet as the angels sing. The music ceased, and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, What am I now bid for the old violin? As he held it up with the bow, a thousand dollars, and who'll make it two? Two? Two thousand. And who'll make it three? Three thousand once. And three thousand twice. Three thousand and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some exclaimed, We do not quite understand what changed its worth. And the answer came, "'Twas the touch of the master's hand. And many a man was so out of tune and battered and scarred by sin is auctioned cheap by the thoughtless crown just like that old violin. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. My friend, The only thing, the only way that a person can be changed is by the touch of the master's hand. This morning, I want you to think with me. Christ, once you come to him and those that come to him, My friend, he will change. I look through the Word of God. I find many where the changes came. I think in the book of Luke chapter 8, I find a woman there that has the issue of blood. In Luke 8, 43, and it says, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years which had spent all her living upon physicians neither could be healed of any came behind him Jesus and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood staunched or dried up. Here's a woman, very sick, has spent all she had on the physicians, but they could not help her. And by the way, friends, we thank God for the doctors. We thank God for the surgeons. 
We thank God for all of these. But you know, as this woman found out, they in themselves cannot change us. Now I'm thankful for what they can do. But this woman came behind him and touched his garment. And one touch of the master's garment, she was made whole. The touch. What made the difference in that old violin? Just the touch of the master's hand. In this woman's life, what made the difference? The touch of the master. In Luke chapter 13, I find, I find a woman with a spirit of infirmity or sickness, if you will. 1311, behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Amen. Here's this woman could not walk, the limbs would not move. But Jesus commanded her to come. You see, Jesus can command. And what he commands, we can do. We find that he took and touched this woman, laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. What'd she do? <laughs> she glorified God. Amen. She glorified God. What made the difference in this woman's life? 18 years. Nothing helped. But all the touch, <laughs> the touch of the master's hand. We find in Luke chapter 15, we find a young man, we find a family, we find a daddy and a mom, and we find two boys. We find this young boy, this young man, he decided home was too hard. Decided that mom and dad were too strict. I pick up in verse 12, Luke 15. And the younger of them, of the two boys, said to his father, Father, <coughs> give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. He was saying, my part that will come to me when you die. He's almost saying, Daddy, just like you're going, just like you're dead. Give me mine. Give me mine now. Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he, that old daddy, divided unto them his living. Just let me throw this in. Child of God, if when you read the Bible, if you'll put yourself in the position where it is, the Word of God will come alive to you. Can you see this daddy? Broken hearted, tears streaming, and he divided unto them his living. <clears throat> Verse 13, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took all that his father gave him, and he took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous living. He's in the world now. He's really enjoying it. world looks good from a distance. It may look good when you're looking in, 
But oh, when I come to verse 24, we find he's looking back now. He's in the hog pen. He changed his mind. Verse 24, the boy is on his way home. He came to his senses. And he's coming back to his father. That father is standing there looking for him. That father's been looking and praying for him. And I believe that mama's down on her knees praying for that boy. They have been since he left. And there they're looking for him. That daddy, in a distance, he sees a, an image. He said, that looks like my boy. That looks like my boy. He got closer. The father ran to meet him. In verse 24, it says, as he's home now, and the daddy and mommy are thrilled to death, but the other boy wasn't too thrilled. For this, my son was dead. And the daddy said, he'd been gone, same as dead, and he's alive again. He was lost and now is found. They were so thrilled that their father made a feast. They began to be merry. It hadn't been that long since that boy came and said, Daddy, give me a hall that's going to be mine. I don't know how long it's been. Don't really tell us. It may have only been a little while. It may have only been three or four months. You know, you, you can spend a whole lifetime in three or four days, really, in, in, the, uh, in the hog pens. So I don't know how long it's been. But, oh, the father was so thrilled to see him. And he made a feast. Did you notice the change in that boy? When he went out, took everything. He's been through the honky tonks. He's been through every place. Didn't take long to run out of money. He had to eat, so his next meals came down with the hogs. Eating with the swine, eating in the hog pens. But when we see him, the daddy ran to him. And he said, Daddy, I'm sorry. He said, I got to thinking about it. He said, here I am in the hog pens. Here I am down here, and I don't have a thing. I've lost everything. And I got to thinking about it. He said, I remember back in my daddy's house. <laughs> he said, the servants back there had it better than I do. The Lord got a hold of his heart. And the boy said, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to go home to my father. What made a difference in that boy's life? What changed him? I say to you, the Lord changed him. Isn't it sad that sometimes people's got to go all the way to the hog pens before they can see how good it is at home? Young people... I beg of you, I beg of you, stay close to your Heavenly Father. Stay close to your mom and daddy. Don't go to the hog pens. You say, boy, it'd be so good 
out there living the way so-and-so is? My friend, you got it better at home. He got up, and he went home because of the touch of the master. I mean, the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 2, and when, this is the maniac of Gadara now, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him, Jesus, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. He lived in the cemetery. And no man could tame him. No, not even with chains. But you skip on down to verse 3 and hear this man that nobody could do anything with him or for him. But you come to verse 15. And they came, they come to Jesus and see him that was processed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Do you get that picture? Here's this man that's been living there in the graveyard, the man that could not be tamed or controlled. But Jesus, but Jesus, we find after he come in contact with Jesus, the people seize this man. He's clothed. Now get the pictures. One, if we're right with God, we'll be clothed right. We find that he's sitting there. He, he's just sitting there. He's altogether different than what he was. He's in his right mind now. What changed it? Just a touch of the master's hand. The touch of Jesus. We run to John chapter 4. We find a woman there. Verse number 16. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly, Here's this woman, Picture her. Hopeless. She had tried different men. She would tried different things. They could not help her. But Jesus came by. Jesus came by, go down to verse 28 with me. We find just before this, she's trusted in the Lord. Verse 28, the woman then left her water pot. Remember, she was coming at the high part of the day when no decent woman, I mean none, of those except those are down and out would come during that part of the day. But Jesus knew she'd be there. You know, Jesus loves those down and out even. Jesus saved and then she left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, verse 29, come see a man 
which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? In just a few verses, we find such a change in a woman. What changed her? The touch of the master's hand. The touch of the master's hand. In John, excuse me, in Acts, chapter 9, as the chapter begins, we find a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. Verse 1 says, And yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to the Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. We find that Saul was a persecutor. He was going to, anyone that believed in the Lord and had anything to do with him, he was going to kill. By the way, that was women or men. That sounds almost a lot like Putin, doesn't it? We see him starting the chapter, a persecutor. I won't take it for time's sake, but you go to verse 3 and down through verse 9, and we find this persecutor is now a prisoner. <laughs> the Lord's got a hold of him. The Lord saved him. He was a persecutor of the Christians. Now he was a prisoner as a Christian. You go to the end of the chapter, and we find, starting in verse 15, and this persecutor who became a prisoner is now a preacher. What made the difference? The touch. The touch of the master's hand. You know, The touch of the master's hand makes a change. I know many people, but the Lord has changed. Some of you remember Bruce DeLane. Oh, the Lord touched Bruce. Changed him. Mitch Sajak. The Lord touched him. Saved him. Our missionary Roger Knapper spent much time in prison. The Lord touched him. And now he's a preacher, a missionary to the prisoners. I've seen the Lord, the people that the Lord has changed. I've seen the Lord change many people. Woman by the name of Sue Hamilton. She was the twin sister to the woman in John 4. Fifth husband. If she had a gun, I wouldn't have been here. She hated, if you will excuse me, she hated my guts. But something happened. The Lord came by and touched her. What a difference. Think of a man by the name of Tom Crank. I went into the jailhouse. Tom got right with the Lord. Tom came out, became one of the greatest witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ that I ever seen. Man, the name of Jess Woodstock. Oh, the change. His wife worked with me and his daughter. They got saved and his wife died. I preached her funeral and Jess was there. Jess was way up, way up, way up 
and international. Jaius heard the gospel. He wanted nothing to do with it. But in just a few weeks, he walked in church. What made the difference? He got saved in the difference. The day I resigned in New Carlisle, head down here, not knowing where I was heading. But Jess came to me the next day or two. And he said, Preacher, why are you leaving? I said, that's what the Lord wants me to do. He said, Preacher, please stay. He said, I will give you any amount of money that you want. Whatever you want, I will give to you. If you'll say, what changed that man? the Lord. The touch of the master's hand I've seen in Lancaster, Ohio. I've seen the Lord change and I won't call the names but many but some of them may be sitting by you now and if you could have seen them then you would not recognize them now. What made the difference? The touch of the master's hand. I ask you today, are there those you would love to see changed? Your families? Those that are lost? You've got unsaved children or parents or friends. You want to see them changed, but you say, Preacher, they won't listen to me. Preacher, you don't know how hard they are. Preacher, you don't know. Well, listen, don't try to change them. You just try to get them to Jesus. He'll do the changing. Maybe the Christians down in the hog pen. They got away from the Lord, but the Lord didn't get away from them. You just keep praying. Watch the Lord get a hold of them. He'll change them. Maybe a drunkard. Maybe a dobatic. Maybe down in the depths of sin. The depths of sexual sin. may even be in the homosexual area. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. They're not too far gone. Jesus still lives today. He's in control. Get them to Jesus. Get them to Jesus. Today, as the song said, we haven't really got the gospel the way we should to the people. Now today we see the churches and we see the new ways coming. Pulp has been taken out and We've now got a stage for comedians and for all kind of things. The church has changed where we used to preach the Bible. Today we try to get them in with rock music and all of these kind of things. 
We think the new ways will work. But my friend, it's only the old ways that's going to work. An amulet was rushing a woman to the hospital. It was ice-covered roads. They slipped off the road into a ditch. There was a four-wheel drive truck came by and saw them. And they attempted to pull that ambulance out of the ditch, but with so much ice, they could not get any traction at all, could not do it. An old Amish man came along with a team of horses. He saw the problem. He hitched his team of horses up to the ambulance. And those horses successfully pulled that ambulance out of the ditch. The old-fashioned method of the team of horses succeeded when the newer methods would not work. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. My friends, can I tell you, the old ways still work. <laughs> Jesus, we need the touch of the Master's hand. Every one of those names I mentioned to you were changed. They weren't changed by the new methods. They was changed by Jesus. Jesus saved them. Jesus changed them. And realize and rejoice that what Jesus has done in the past for others, he'll still do today. For those who believe in him. <clears throat> Jesus is still coming by. Got a good idea. He's here this morning. <laughs> I got an idea. He's touching some hearts this morning. Are you going to stay in the ditch? Stay there in misery in the hog pens? Or are you going to touch his garment? Are you going to hear him say, come to me and I'll give you rest? Come to me and I'll take care of your needs. This morning, do you need to be changed? Do you need to be changed? Now, I'm not talking about what you think, but according to what God says. Do you want to stay in the hog pens? Do you want to stay unsaved? Or do you want to be changed? My friend, if you want to be saved, God will save you. That's why he's tugging your heart right now. Will you say yes to him? You may be here this morning and you say, Preacher, I'm saved. But preacher, I don't like what I'm seeing. Preacher, I, I don't see, like what's going on in my life.
If you don't, what do you think the Lord thinks? <laughs> the Lord wants to change you. Oh, a touch of the master's hand. Maybe you need a change in your marriage. Let me take that back. I don't mean go out and get a new wife or husband. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. But there's some things in the marriage that needs to be taken care of. It may be some things in the family. It may be in your daily walk. It may be in your daily talk. But you know there's some changes, needs. I ask you this morning, will you come to the Lord? Will you let the Lord touch you? He'll make a difference. I tell you, the Lord makes a change in your life. You won't even be miserable getting up on Sunday morning. Come to church and listen to this old preacher. You let the Lord get a hold of you. You'll want to come to God's house. You'll want to hear God's book. You'll want to witness to others. You'll want to bring your children up in the admonition of the Lord. What are we going to do in our world today? Well, I'll tell you, not going to be much help found in this world. But I thank God for the one who came to Calvary, came to Bethlehem, went to Calvary. I'm so glad he stops by <laughs> to our homes and our houses and to our church. And this morning, Do you want to be changed? It's up to you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. As we stand, the pianist will play. If you're without Jesus, oh, please, the Holy Spirit working on your heart now, will you come? Christian, there's a need in your life, will you come? I may have not even touched it. I may have not even been in the same ball field. But the Lord knows. Will you let him change that life? Lord, touch every life, every heart, the way you see fit. As the pianist plays, will you come?